In the screencast, I will show how to work with uh, SQLite database from Lively and how to create a Lively application that uh, uses an SQLite store. So, to get started, um, the first step that you probably want to do is to create your own database that you can uh, use for your own specific application that you want to create um, that you can basically use uh, independently from any other um, database that is, that is there. So in order to do that um, you can uh, use our SQLite interface that we pro provide. Um, the interface itself is uh, implemented as a lively module. So when you uh, open up the system code browser and um, go into the uh, category lively and then uh, store, you will see that there is an SQLite interface there. And um, this is ba the basic programmatic uh, interface that you can use for interacting uh, with uh, uh, databases. So the first method that I would like to uh, show is how to uh, create or how to uh, ensure the existence uh, of a database. For that we can use the ensureDB method. So when we just open up a JavaScript workspace here and uh, we access that ensure db method, then we can pass in um, three arguments. The first argument is uh, the name that we want to give the uh, database. Uh, this name will later be used for accessing the database, for example, for querying it. Um, or for, for inserting uh, values, for changing values, uh, and these kind of things. Um, the second argument is uh, optional and is uh, a file name. Um, you can either use uh, the string colon memory colon. Um, this would create an in-memory database for um, the, the call. However, this will not be stored once the uh, server restarts. So what you can do instead is you can uh, pass in um, uh, a relative pass that is uh, relative basically to the uh, lively installation that we have here. So for example in our case I would uh, like to create a database called uh, screencast DB, so this is first the name that I give it. I can later reuse that name uh, to access the particular database. Um, I uh, want to have it persistent as a uh, stored as a file, uh, and I will use the uh, users can um, screen cast db.sqlite uh, file. And uh, then as a last, last step, I can pass in um, a callback that will be called once the uh, database is created. Uh, the callback uh, will get um, an uh, first argument, it's uh, the error, so in case something goes wrong, uh, this object will be uh, populated and should give you details uh, about, the, about the error. So um, let's say if we have an error, then alert uh, uh, could not create db, and then I just uh, print the error to see what's going on, and otherwise we uh, will just say okay, the uh, db was created. So. Um, now let's just uh, evaluate this little snippet, see what happens. Um, so okay, we see that the database was uh, created. 
Um, so now we can start interacting with the uh, SQLite ScreencastDB database. Um, first of all, um, we want to uh, interactively work with that database. In order to do so, I will open up another workspace and this workspace um, in this workspace, I will change the text mode um, to SQL. When you scroll down a little uh, in that list, you will see that SQL entry here. So instead of having a JavaScript workspace, we will turn that workspace into an SQL workspace. So once you have done that, you can right-click into that workspace and the um, uh, menu will now have a new entry, uh, SQL. And the SQL entry has uh, one item that you, might, that you want to use, which is the change DB accessor uh, entry. And this is basically the name that we gave when we were creating the database. So what we want to do is we want to point that workspace here uh, to the database that we have created so that we can start interacting with it. So in order to do so, we basically have to tell the workspace what database it should uh, interact with. So you can have multiple data databases and uh, for this work workspace we want to uh, interact with our new database that we have just created. So we click on change DB accessor and in here so we replace that uh, default entry here with uh, screencast DB. Okay. So once we have done that, we can actually start uh, defining um, typing SQL commands. So the first um, the, the first command that we that we want to do is since the database right now is newly created and empty, we want to create a table. So uh, this is basically just a normal SQL uh, syntax. So we want to create a table um, and let's create a table called high scores. And the table should have two columns and the first is like a user column which should just be like a normal string attribute and the uh, second column should be like a score uh, column uh, and this should be an integer. So in here uh, what you can do is uh, you can basically select uh, that statement or you can basically just um, place the cursor on the line that you want to execute and then uh, as you would do in a JavaScript workspace you can uh, simply uh, either do a printed or do it for executing that command. So when I uh, evaluate a do it, I will see uh, that uh, little message here coming from uh, SQLite um, saying that, uh, okay, this uh, um, statement um, was, was executed. So, okay, now we have created the high scores table. Let's, let's query the table. Let's uh, select uh, everything uh, from high scores. So I, I will uh, switch to using uh, shortcuts here. So uh, I will uh, do printed, and the shortcut for printed should be command P. So I will do a command P. And um, I printed the re uh, result of that um, select uh, star from high scores query. However, we currently have no values in high scores, so nothing was printed. So let's let's change it. Let's change. Uh, there's nothing in there. Let's insert uh, into high scores uh, some values. Um, for example, we want to uh, add a value there. So add a user. Let's call that user Rick, uh, and let's say uh, the user Rick has like a score of 95. Uh, let's also add another uh, value here, then uh, let's go from 100, and uh, one last uh, attempt, uh, last value orbit. So one by one, I will evaluate the statements uh, first, second third and then I will um, run that select statement again when I 
to print it. Uh, I will see uh, now that uh, I get basically uh, the, the rows printed that were selected from the high score table. So now we basically have three uh, rows in that, in that table um, with the values that we provided. Okay, so this is uh, basically a first um, step towards interacting with um, SQL database in Lively. Now, uh, let's uh, actually integrate um, the, the data that you have in the database into uh, a morphic application. So in order to do so, we need to create uh, some um, uh, UI that we can use. Um, so let's... Uh, minimize the stuff here and let's create a rectangle should just be a container let's change the color to something okay um, so first of all we want to basically just show the contents of the uh, database in order to do so we will create a list And uh, we will create like a new button um, that we, will, when we press it, uh, we will use for basically querying the database and populating this list with the uh, entries that are in the database. So uh, in order to do so, uh, let's just change the label of that button to uh, like load from DB something. Um, let's connect the uh, fire um, connection point of the button to the rectangle object. The rectangle object is our container object and should uh, hold the main application logic uh, if you like. Uh, I just uh, click on it um, and uh, since we don't have a uh, method yet, I will uh, choose custom here and I will uh, enter a method name load uh, db uh, entries or something. So this is uh, like a new connection that we make. Uh, so when the button is fired, we will call that load db entries method. So the load db entry entries method, of course, doesn't exist yet. So we want to create it. Uh, so we will open up the object editor uh, on the rectangle here, and we will add a new method, and this should the should be the load db entries method. So the load dbs and, and entries method will use uh, the SQL light interface, the programmatic SQL light interface that we have seen before. Um, and in that interface, we have um, the query method available. So SQL light interface query. Uh, we again pass in the name of the uh, database, the DB accessor code. Um, then we pass in basically either uh, one or multiple uh, SQL statements that we want to use to query. And as a last argument, we will pass in a callback uh, that is uh, then uh, used for processing the results of our query. So uh, in order to do that, uh, we again need a DB name uh, and we remember correctly, yes, it should be the screencast DB. Um, again, this time we don't need the file name. The file name was already assigned to that name, so the name is basically a shorthand um, to, the, uh, to the already uh, opened database. So, but what we need is uh, the lively store SQLite uh, interface object, SQLite, oops, SQLite interface object, and we uh, want to use the query method. So, first pass in the database name, then uh, we pass in an uh, array, so a list of uh, queries, so we can have more than uh, one query and basically one request. Um, however, right now we uh, just actually uh, enter one, uh, um, one 
list item for the for the queries uh, uh, argument. So in here we want again to select everything from the high scores table. And then as a last argument uh, we have uh, our callback um, our callback which will again get uh, an error argument, the first parameter, so if uh, something goes wrong, uh, this uh, error will uh, hold basically the object that describes the error, and uh, second argument, which are our query results. So uh, first of all, if we have an error, then uh, let's just issue an alert right now. Um, could not query plus error and then uh, we basically just return from that function and don't uh, push, uh, process any, anything further. So if uh, there's no error then we will just continue our control flow and uh, we will start uh, processing the results. So first of all uh, we probably might want to look at what the results actually are. So in order to find out, uh, first of all, just uh, add an inspect statement into the callback to uh, actually be able to examine the, the, re the results that we, that we get, right? So, okay, so we will save that method and um, then also uh, select it and run it. Okay, so now we have uh, the result. Let's, let's click on it. So, as you can see here, uh, the results basically are a nested array. So, for each of these uh, query uh, statements in that list that we uh, entered here, we basically have uh, an entry in the results list. So, since we just entered one statement, we just have like one list item here. So uh, basically the uh, result of the first uh, query statement um, is uh, this zero. Uh, so when we print that again, um, you will see that this is a, a two-dimensional array. So we have uh, the uh, uh, names of the uh, two columns of our table as the uh, first item and then uh, the subsequent items are the rows. So um, we can process uh, this a little bit further. We could di directly access the uh, two-dimensional array. Uh, usually this is uh, uh, not the uh, most JavaScript friendly way to actually interact with the results. So um, in case you want to print the results as something readable that uh, is not an array, what you can use is uh, helper function strings uh, print table and uh, you pass in the two-dimensional array there and uh, when I evaluate that then uh, I get basically a simple table printed. However, right now we don't want to convert the results into a string. Uh, what we want to do is we want to convert the results to JavaScript objects that we can then process further. For that there's another helper method uh, called grid to ob Objects. Um, and in here we pass in the result again and here we will um, basically, when I uh, print that, we will basically pass that table and uh, the uh, first item uh, is basically used uh, to describe the fields of the objects that should be uh, created and then for each row that we had in our results array we will create a new JavaScript object that uh, then basically has the uh, as, uh, as its keys the, um, the column names. So here we now have three um, JavaScript objects. Okay, so let's use uh, this finding uh, to continue with our uh, morphic application. So instead of an inspect uh, results um, statement, we replace it. We want to convert our 
uh, results and the first item of it uh, to objects and uh, let's uh, process things further in another method so we don't clutter things up here too much let's say we want to uh, have a, like this dot populate list method that we uh, basically just call with the results of that function um, note that uh, since I'm in that callback function here, this is actually not bound to our uh, rectangle object. So uh, I will just bind the function so that this is correctly uh, pointing to our rectangle object here. So I will save that method and I will just create a new method populate list. And here we have our um, query objects and um, now what we can do uh, let's minimize the object editor we need to give uh, our list a name uh, so uh, this is uh, our, our query result list um, and we will um, just um, get a reference to the query result list and we will populate the list with list items and we will convert each of these uh, query objects that we have here uh, actually query result objects each of these query results uh, into a list item so we uh, just do that using the map function so we will map over the list and for each of these objects um, we will return a new object which is a list item uh, the list item has an attribute string which is used uh, for like, printing the representation in the list um, and we look again at uh, our table that we have defined the, the objects that are coming out of it uh, each of these objects will have a user uh, field so we will uh, use the user field uh, as a string and then the value of the list item is basically just the object that we got from querying it Okay, so let's save uh, the method and let's just try it out. So we connected the button already, so when I press on that button, okay, then we will uh, load values from the database. Okay, now uh, let's uh, actually also show like the score value that we uh, have uh, maybe in a text element that we can add here. So we will add a text element. Uh, to our rectangle and uh, we can give it a name it's the score text and, and whenever we want to click on the selection of that list so we connect the, uh, the selection of that list to uh, a method that does not yet exist we will call that method um, uh, user selected. Okay. So whenever we press on a list item, we will have a user selected uh, call with the uh, with the uh, selected user object and we will get a reference to our text and we will set the text string of the text to our selected user uh, selected user and uh, to actually to the score value of the selected user so the selected user uh, actually is uh, the value of the list item right so we uh, passed in uh, like values to these list items which are basically the object that we got from the database um, so uh, this, these objects here the the value object and each uh, of these uh, database objects has a user field and uh, should also have uh, I remember correctly, a score field right so and what we want to uh, show as the text string is actually the score 
Okay. Um, actually, this method also gets called when the selection is uh, set back to null. So what you probably want to do is you want to test if there is uh, uh, the user, if it's a valid object. So in this case, we want to use the score. Otherwise, we want to have the string um, nothing selected. Okay. So let's save that method and let's try it out. Click on then 100, Robert. All right. So uh, as a last step, uh, let's uh, uh, close the circle here. Let's uh, update things back. Uh, let's update the database from our application. So right now we are just querying, just reading values. Let's also uh, put content back. Um, so uh, the easiest uh, thing is to just create a new button. Uh, let's uh, call that button save and this is our save button um, and when we press that button what we want to do is we want to uh, basically update the uh, score for the selected user so we uh, connect that fire property of that button with uh, like the uh, not yet existing method that we will call uh, update uh, score um, and then uh, we just go back to our object editor and add the update score method score so uh, what we want to do here is we uh, first of all want to get the value of our score text so the uh, new value is um, get a reference to the score text and to the text string property of the score. We print that currently it's 100. Um, however, it's a string and uh, the score actually is an integer as we defined it earlier, so we convert it to a number. Uh, and we also want to uh, get the um, the user that we uh, should update the score for. So the user is uh, the currently uh, selected user of our list. Um, so the list was called query result list. Um, so I get the query result list and the selection of it. So when we print that, okay, it's an object printed using uh, command i, which basically inspects that thing. Uh, okay, we will see the current selection is an object uh, with the field user. So uh, we'll just use it as user here. Um, and now we can uh, again use our SQL interface for updating uh, the database that we have. Um, and here we will use the uh, one uh, database method. The one database method, method can be used uh, for basically uh, having like side defecting uh, code uh, running it in the context of the database side defecting code like for example an update method. So uh, the statements are again very simple. Uh, the name of the database and the statements that should update the, the database and then a callback when, when things are done. Um, so we will do a lively store uh, SQLite interface one. Uh, we have uh, again our database name that, that we need. Um, I will yeah, I will just uh, copy that for now. Let's clean it up later. So it's our database name. use that here, db name, uh, and the SQL code that we want to write, uh, well, let's, let's look at the SQL code actually that we want to write. Let's go back to our SQL workspace. And uh, so what do we need to do to update the database? Well, there is uh, the uh, update statement in SQL, uh, which allows us to update the high scores table, 
uh, and we want to set uh, the uh, score field uh, to uh, let's just try it out here as an example let's say 55 um, to uh, like the matching rows where uh, let's say the user uh, equals so for example Robert so I can uh, again uh, just type it into my SQL workspace and I can run it uh, using the do it command here and when I uh, query the results again I will see okay the uh, robot canon was updated so what I want to do here is I basically just want to use the same statement in here right uh, so but instead of uh, having constant values for score and user I want to use the, um, the values that I got from my morphs um, so let's pull things apart a little to make uh, to keep it easier to read. Uh, so let's assign the value of our SQL code to a variable called SQL. And uh, to keep things readable, we will use the strings.format method, which will allow us to uh, replace the content that we uh, want to par parameterize as uh, these uh, percentage sign s values. So percentage sign s score and user, and then we can just pass in the values that should be uh, that uh, that the percentage sign s should be replaced with as arguments to the strings dot format method. So in here we will enter the user uh, sorry the new value of the score and the user uh, as an argument. Okay. So we will pass this in as the SQL, and then uh, the last, um, the last argument is the callback. And here we will just uh, show if there is an error alert. Uh, we'll just print the error. Otherwise, uh, we will have okay uh, updated. Okay, save it, and let's try things out. So right now we have uh, the user den selected. So let's change the value of den to 110. Uh, let's try to save it. Okay, updated. Let's check it. Um, actually, uh, try to select it in the work uh, in the SQL workspace, and yes, we will see then uh, now as an updated uh, score count. Um, Please note that when I click on the uh, value in the list again, uh, the value will be set back to 100. This is because right now the list wasn't updated, right? So in the uh, uh, update score method, we just took care to update the, uh, the database, uh, not the list element itself, actually. But what we can do is we can simply press load from database again. And when we uh, press on then, then uh, we will see the updated values here. Okay, um, so this basically concludes uh, what I wanted to show of uh, really creating a little uh, morphic uh, application that uses a database connection. Just one last thing um, that uh, I want to mention. Um, right now, we have not uh, created any initialization code yet for uh, the, the object. So basically when you save that object and store it for example inside the parts bin or store it as uh, an object uh, in a lively world and you load that world up, uh, what you want to do is you want uh, to make sure that they actually uh, that actually the SQLite uh, interface module, the lively module is loaded and that uh, there is a database, a high score data database there. So this is basically the code that we um, wrote in the beginning that uh, JavaScript workspace here where we had that ensure the B call. So um, in order to specify that, let's just copy the code here, go into our object editor and define uh, init method. Init. And in that init method, um, we will uh, first set the database name. So we uh, repeated the data database name over and over um, again and set it actually as a proper property of the morph. So we assign the uh, db name um, 
to the screencast DB string. Um, and let's also assign it to a variable here. And um, we uh, let's also set the file name. File name. Uh, and db name and we also make sure that the SQL interface module, the lively module is loaded. Uh, by default it will not get loaded when a lively world uh, is started. So in order to do that we simply require the lively store SQLite interface, right? This is basically uh, just the module that you see in the system code browser here. So when I click on that entry in the uh, SQL interface in the uh, upper left column, uh, you will see that there is a, a module called lively store SQLite interface. So and in order to ensure that this module is really there, uh, we uh, in our init method just require it, require to run um, and uh, once that SQLite interface is loaded, what we want to do is we simply want to uh, run our EnsureDB code where we uh, assign the, uh, we basically open the database that is uh, referenced uh, and stored in that file and, and we will assign it the name which is the screencast db name that we can then reuse later. So when we have uh, that code we can just save it and um, we will call that init method from the onload method uh, of the morph and the onload method um, gets uh, run basically when that uh, morph is uh, Reinstantiated um, either on word load or when uh, it is loaded from the parts bin. Uh, so we can uh, just try to run it. And yeah, okay, we will see. KDB was created, uh, I mean, it uh, existed already. Uh, basically, it was just ensured that it's really there. You might want to change the method there. Okay. So this concludes uh, basically uh, the example of uh, how to create a database-backed application in Lively. Thanks for watching.